with if you have your Bible with you, open your Bible. If you don't, don't. You'll have it up there. Turn me to Acts chapter 23, verse 1. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good consciousness, conscience before God until this day. We need to live a, a life with a pure conscience before God and men. We need to have a good conscience before God and men. The re main reason is because I don't want to hinder my faith. Because if, my, if I don't walk in a good conscience, it will hinder my faith. Right. It, it says in uh, it says in First Timothy. Turn me to First Timothy chapter one, verse start with verse three. First Timothy chapter one, verse three. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. Say faith. 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 Now the end of the commandment is this, is charity, that's love, out of a pure heart, and of a good conscience, and of faith and faith. We need to have a good conscience. We need to have faith and faith. I mean, we need to stand strong in faith and have a good conscience. If, our, if we don't have a good conscience, our faith won't work. That's right. Are we, what happens if I, if, I, if I do something that's against my conscience, then the devil will bring that back up to me when I'm trying to stand in faith. I'm, I'm going to give you an example of this. Last night, I, I was coming back from Uber driving at 9 o'clock last night. I stopped in. I stopped in uh, Casey's up here in Excelsior Springs, and uh, I put I put my charge card in the in the gas deal, and, uh, and and said, "You want a receipt?" I said, "Yes," and, and so I started filling my car, and then it said prepaid five ninety nine, and then I, and I, it would only let me put five ninety nine in my car, and I thought, "Well, that's kind of weird." Then I got home and I got to thinking about that, and I thought, "Somebody may have paid prepaid on that." And I, I may have stole somebody else's gas, but I didn't see anybody else around, so I, I didn't know. But anyhow, I, I made sure and stopped by there this morning on my way back to church this morning. And I went and I told them that what happened, and they said, well, we don't have anybody that said anything, but I said, well, I left them my name and phone number. I said, I just don't want to steal somebody else's money. She said, do you know how rare this is for somebody to come back to this? <laughs> really? And I said, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I, don't, I, don't, I, want, I want my conscience clear. Right. So I left my name and phone number. I said, it's six bucks. I said, five ninety nine. I said, I may, I may still owe you six bucks. So I said, if, if you, if you, could, and she said, I'll have to reconcile everything. So I've done that yet this morning. I said, well, you do that when, if you find that you're short six bucks, you give me a call because, because I want to come back pay. I don't, I don't want to owe somebody. I don't want to steal something. And she said, I can't believe you came back. <laughs> well, just to keep your conscience clear. Yeah. Always do that. Yes. Anything that's against yes. your conscience, don't yes. do it. That's right. If it's against your conscience, one time I was going to a Bible study and we were kind of late, and so, and so I pulled in, and I and after I got pulled out, and I realized they gave me too much change back, and that like an extra quarter, <laughs> too much change, and I I got to thinking about that and I thought I need to, I need to go back by there and get that money back. Well, it's not a blessing of God if they give you too much change. Because somebody's going to have to pay that out of their pocket. Yeah. That's right. So even if it's even if it's a dollar or a quarter or five dollars or what, always go back. Always give it back. Yeah. Because then wow. God will bless you because of that. Amen. That's right. What I thought, I thought, well, I, I just if I let that go, the devil can use that against me if I'm trying to stand in faith or something. Because all of a sudden the devil's like, you kept that money. And you, you knew that was too much. They gave you back. And that will hinder your faith. He goes on to say in, in Timothy, let's go ahead and read this. Verse 6, from which some having swerved 
have turned aside into vain janglings, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor wherever they affirm. But we know that the law is good. Say, the law is good. The law is good. If a man use it lawfully. In other words, the, the law is good as long as you obey the law, as long as you do right by the law. You know, there's people that want to twist and pervert the things of God. As long as we follow God, God's word truthfully, it's, it brings life to us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The lawless and disobedient for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers and fathers of murderers and mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them to defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers and for liars who perjured, who perjured persons. If there be any other thing that's contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed in my trust. Of course, the law was good for people who are living ungodly to try to bring them back to God. If you're living ungodly, you need to turn back to God. Yes. Why? Because if you don't, you're going to hell. Yeah. That's right. There is a hell to shun, folks. We need to live right. Why? Because God's, he will judge the living and the dead. Judgment begins in the house of God. Judgment begins in the house of God. Yes, it does. Thank you, Lord. First Timothy, now on down to verse 18 of this same chapter. First Timothy 1, 18 says, This charge I commit to thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies that went before thee, that thou might be, that thou mightest war a good warfare. Holding faith. Say, hold on to faith. Holy faith. Holding faith. And a good conscience. And a good conscience. See, we, to really hold on to faith, we have to have a good conscience. We have to have a good conscience. Which some having put away, some just put away their conscience. Just go against their conscience. Some having put away concerning faith, they've made, they've made ship, shipwreck. Concerning faith, because they put away a good conscience, they've, they've made their faith shipwrecked. So it's ruining your faith if you put away a good conscience. Always follow your conscience. Always follow your conscience. Why? Because that's how God leads us by our conscience. The Holy Ghost leads you by your conscience. If something says don't do that, you know what we should do? We should not do it. Something says, do that, we should do it. If God gives you a check about something, don't do it. That's right. He'll write down in here. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. And this spake he of the Holy Spirit, which they which believe should receive. So if we believe, if we're a believer, we should receive the Holy Ghost because God wants to lead us, He wants to guide us, He wants to direct us. Now, the Holy Spirit is dealing with every person. To try to lead them to God. The Bible says the goodness of God draws people to repentance. And the Holy Spirit draws people to repentance. The Holy Spirit draws, draws you away from all people about what's evil and what's not. The Holy Spirit deals with people. Before the Holy Spirit, I mean, people may have done evil things. They may not. But now everybody knows what they're doing. Everybody. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is dealing with them. Saying, don't do that. That's evil. Now, it's a lot of people sear their conscience. They just, they just, I'm not going to listen to that. And gradually, you'd like to sear your conscience with a hot iron. That's what the Bible says. So a lot of people will sear their conscience with a hot iron by not listening to God. Just over and over, they become so, so evil that there's only evil <coughs> continually. That's the way the world was when God destroyed it with Noah's flood. He looked at their hearts and their intents of their hearts were only evil continually. You can kind of tell what's in a man's heart by what comes out of their mouth. Jesus out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I was at yesterday morning, the, the electricity went off. It even went off here at the church. So when I came into the church this morning, it was getting kind of hot and stuffy in here. And I thought, it doesn't feel like the air is on. So I walked back there, and the, the, the time set was like 2.30 2 or 3.30 in the morning. And so the air hadn't kicked on this morning. So I had to reset the air, the, temp, the time, and then the air just immediately kicked on. But but when I when I yesterday morning the air the electricity went off at our house and, and it went off earlier here in Excelsior and it went off at our house and 
And about we get getting close to nine, I said, I told, told, I mean, I couldn't get online and minister to people. I like to minister to people online on Facebook and stuff. And so I couldn't do any of that. So I told Kathy, I'm going to go out and do some Uber and Lyft driving. <laughs> so I left the house at nine o'clock and I got back at nine, nine o'clock at night. So, or nine or nine thirty. But anyhow, so I left the house to go do Uber driving. And, uh, and then I found out there's some weird stuff going on in Kansas City. They had, a, they had a gay pride thing going on in Kansas City yesterday. And uh, I had no idea that was going on. I picked up this, this guy at, up at the airport, and turns out he was a gay guy, and he, he goes, by this, goes by this festival thing. He said, what's going on there? I said, I have no idea. And then I've been up went, picking up several gay people, and, and I found out that they, gay pride was going on. They said, do you know the gay pride event's going today? I said, I have no idea about that. I didn't even... <laughs> but anyhow... I found, see these guys, the stuff that came out of their mouth, if you believed it, it's amazing, the filth that came out of their mouth. It's because it, whatever's big in our hearts, that's what comes out of our mouth. So they were just spewing evil things out of their mouth. Why? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So we should be very careful about what we say out of our mouths. Yes. I had, I had a minister friend, and we, we, we did like ICFM meetings here and stuff, and I brought Don Burton, which is a good minister friend of mine, and one of the ministers, he was going on about, he would cuss, he would cuss all the time just to prove it was okay for him to do that. You know, the, the New Testament says we shouldn't cuss. Did you know that? It says we use, shouldn't use foul language. Matter of fact, Peter, after he had denied Christ two times, the third time, they said, no, you're one of them. And they started cussing just to prove he wasn't a disciple of Christ. They started cussing. Bible says we shouldn't cuss. And Don Burton heard this guy cuss, and I said, yeah, he likes to do that, just to prove it, it's okay for him to do that, because he would say, all things are lawful unto me. All things are not lawful unto us, folks. Even though that all is just all, and it depends on the context. And when it goes on talking about food, the next verse. Yes, it does. Food for the body and the body for food. So it, was, it wasn't talking about all things. It's a Greek word, past. It just means all. It depends on what context it's in, all what. So, but he, he said, I can do anything. Not just, I'm still okay with God. One time I was talking to him. He said, I said, now, you, you're telling, because he's always pushing this once they saved always step on me. And so, so I said, now, now you're telling me this. That if a guy receives Christ, and he's an axe murderer. And later he decides to go back to murdering people. He's right in the middle of cutting somebody's head off. And the rapture takes place. You're telling me he will make the rapture? He said, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's scary. You know, it first says in 1 John, we know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in them. It's, it's not possible. So to have that kind of doctrine is just, is just evil. And, I'm, I, I, you know, it's scary to me. But he, when, when you spew evil out of your mouth, it's because there's something. You've got a heart problem. So there's evil in your heart. Yes. So if we got evil coming out of our mouth, we need to get our heart right with God. There was a guy, a guy named Kim Clement, and he died, he died like at 60 years old. He called himself a prophet. He was on TV all the time. But I was watching him late at night, and, uh, and he started cussing. And all of a sudden, he said, oh, the cameras are on. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be cussing whether the cameras are on or not. <laughs> So Don Burton, he told me, he told me that he cusses all the time when he preaches, when he when the cameras aren't on. And he and Don told me he prayed to God about it. He said God told him, "I'm not into cussing." You know, God's not into cussing. We should we should use language that that fits a child of God. Amen. We shouldn't sound like the world. We shouldn't look like the world. We shouldn't act like the world. That's right. We should be who God would have us to be. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. 